for homebrew Wednesday 11, I'm going to move the beer from the primary fermenter into a carboy. So right now what I'm doing is I'm setting up the video to see if I've got a position in a place so that I can play it through without having to fiddle with it. So I'm looking at, uh, I'm going to have to take the lid off. I'm going to have to put the siphon pump in here, put it in here, pump it a few times, and let this fill up. I also have to re-sanitize the airlock. No, I don't. I've got an extra airlock upstairs. So I'm going to sanitize that airlock upstairs, finish sanitizing my siphon hose, and sanitizing my carboy, and I'll be back down and we'll shoot this video. So, got stuff sanitized. Sometimes you got to think on your feet a little bit. I was trying to figure out, well, what am I going to do with this as I'm taking off the lid to the bucket? So, I brought my bucket down that's already got, the, that has the sanitizer in it, kept this in it, so now I've got a clean place to keep that. I've got the uh, bung and the extra airlock on top of the carboy that I'm going to siphon the beer down into. The beer's been in here for seven days, so I want to try and clean it up a little bit and ferment for another seven days, even though there's been little to no activity. I'm going to do the full two-week fermentation. Um, I'm going to let this run because I've, some people are wondering, well, we always see the perfect processes. Well, I'm going to show you a not-so-perfect process because I always have a hard time prying the lid. I've got to do it little by little and get the lid off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in these cramped quarters. If I can find a place where it's, okay, like here. It's just come up a little bit. I keep trying to come around the rim. In theory, anyway. Yeah, so if someone's got an easier way to open these damn things, let me know. <clears throat> okay, I find it easier to open it on the ground. That means I'm going to mix stuff up a little. Uh, so, <clears throat> I'm going to come to the ground. I need better leverage. There. There we go. Just needed to get past that sticking point. All right. Now this lid's going to go in the wash so I can put this anywhere. Smells like beer. Nice dark color. Uh, yeah, you got the spices in there. Oh, the hops, huh? Interesting. I'll give you a quick gander. So this is my kind of a concoction here. Yeah, it's uh, interesting to say the least. Okay, so take my bung out. I'm going to go ahead and put it in my star sand. Good place to keep it. I'm going to bring out my siphon. Make sure the liquid fluid's out. I mean, they say the foam's okay because it kind of breaks down and Okay, so put this in the bottom. Yeah, so the foam is supposed to break down and actually help feed the. Alrighty. See what we got here. And we put 
push it through. And we've got a pour. All right. We have a pour. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and come back to when it's full and we finish up this process. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Halfway through. Halfway through. And I'm not going to tilt the bucket. I'm going for uh, a quality pour instead of quantity in this case. So I'll, I want to keep as much of the uh, solid material as possible. Uh, we'll come back when we get close to the end. Just under a gallon left. So you can see by the level of the beer in the bucket here and the gallon marking here. We have lots of stuff there. I'm going to call it quits there. Wow. There is a lot of sludge. Of course, we had like 16 ounces of uh, pumpkin. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and reuse the, the thing. No, maybe not. Okay, we'll use a new one then. I was going to think, I think I might reuse the, uh, the uh, airlock from before. It's kind of stuck in the rubber, but it's got alcohol. Uh, vodka in there already. So let's pull this out. The last bit out of there. Seal it. And the next thing I need to do. I want to put vodka in my airlock, keep it uh, clean. Okay. This is the cheapest vodka we could get at the store. Okay, looks like we got a good seal. Now, oh my, I'll show you how much sludge we got in the bottom of this thing. So, what's the easiest way to do this? Pop. Okay. That's how much sludge there is on the bottom. Shoo! inch and a half or so. That's going to be fun cleaning that. Alrighty. So, uh, I guess I'll go up to my desk and we'll finish this off. Alright. Finishing up Homebrew Wednesday 11. Uh, I've posted on 17brewcrew.com I have some concerns about how bad the sediment smelled after transferring the two buckets and then cleaning out the primary fermenter. So, I'll see what kind of responses I get, but I think the main thing is uh, how the beer is in a week from now. Um, but I'll definitely read any comments and stuff that you guys have or make comments here. Um, when initially smelling the beer, it didn't seem like it had any off flavors. But boy, I tell you what, the, the tube on the bottom of the primary fermenter. <laughs> <laughs> Even after rinsing the bucket out, I had to leave it outside. So, well, this can't be a homebrew Wednesday without. Without uh, having some homebrew, right? This is from my uh, Gozawa Dark Ale.
Looks fairly clear in the pot. It's been in the fridge for three days. As I said before, it's beer. So, anyway, <laughs> cheers. Happy Homebrew Wednesday, and uh, here's to finding a good brew.